In this video, I'll show you how I took a slab like this and made it into a nice top for my drill press. Really like the way it turned out. I'm enjoying working with the live edge stuff. I encourage you to try it out yourself. So stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, I got a piece of this live edge speedle kill spruce. One of the spruce beetle just devastated our spruce here, here in Alaska. I've personally cut 72 trees off my property and still have a lot more to go. This spring I'll be cutting a lot more spruce down. It's just a fire hazard. They go up like a matchstick when they're dead. Uh, these are kind of cutoffs from a mill right up the street. So I grabbed a few to practice with. I want to start working with live edge. I figured this will be a great project to do. Try to flatten one, get it square, and use that as a top for my drill press. First thing I did was mark the very center. I'm going to cut it in half, be a little easier to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and get the circular saw out and just cut that in half. I'm not going to worry about getting it square just yet. I'll do that at a later step. Make sure the blade goes all the way through, but not too much. I don't want to saw into my table. So as you can see, this piece of wood has some issues. I accept the challenge. This is right at eight inches here. So I'm gonna mark four inches there, four inches here. Use a straight edge and mark that center line. Well, close to center line. So what I've done with this middle mark here, actually my reference, is taken my square, lined it up with that mark, drew a line, flipped it over, make sure it's still lined up, and then draw the line again, Did that here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this live edge off and square it to these marks here. I'll rip the live edge off and then I'll cross cut it here. This is the narrowest part right here actually over here. That's about three and five eighths. Better go three and a half. I think three and a half is going to be where I need to be. So three and a half inches from the center line. So I'm going to make a mark here. I'm using the one inch on the ruler on that line. About four and a half inches. So this is a three and a half inches to that mark. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for this side. Three and a half inches off that center mark. Now, I'll get my track saw. You could totally use any straight edge and use a circular saw. You can even clamp down like your level and use it as a straight edge, but I'm gonna get my tracks out because I've got them. Now, I'll go ahead and take this live edge off. I don't even need to clamp this down. So, since I got this here, I'll go ahead and make my cross cuts. Now, if I did this right, oh man, nice and square. I like it. Nice and square. This some square too. Okay, I'm gonna keep this as my live edge. I got some cracks in here I gotta fix. So what I'm gonna do is cut this live edge off. I'm just gonna have live edge on the front. So I'll cut this off, same way. Measure from the center line, the narrowest, yeah, three and three quarters. This board is pretty square. So this is where I'm going with it. Nice thick one inch. I have to plane it down, of course. I have a nice live edge here. And I'll have to get one more out of this slab. That's seven and three quarters. That's good. I think I've got that. So I need to get one more board like this one, run them through the jointer. They're too wide to go through flatwise, so I'll have to put them through my planer with the jig I built. Okay, I went and cut another piece. 
on the same slab. Unfortunately, it's a quarter of an inch short. What I think I'll do is cut this down because I got another piece here. Still got a live edge on it. I'll take these over to the table saw, cut two pieces and cover this up. That's what I'll do. Got my pieces. Oh, they could almost be glued together right there, but gotta run them through the planer. Yeah, boy, that, that track saw did a good job. It's gonna be a challenge. I could have just cut a sheet of plywood and be done with it, but no, I just had to go this route. So I just cut a piece off of uh, this particle board, it's nice and flat. It'll make a perfect jig for my planer. Planer is a 13 inch planer, so I'll rip it to 12 inches and go from there. About a half inch by half inch. It's 5 eighths by a half inch. Let me glue this at this end. Definitely don't want to use screws or nails, nothing metal. I'm gonna have blades going across this. Keep it fairly low so the blades don't hit this, but high enough to keep your stock in here. Well, I gotta tell you, it is sure nice to have this on wheels now. Let's see if we can get it flat. Wow. That should do it. Okay. Okay, I learned one thing. Um, I'm gonna get my white MDF out because the hot glue likes to stick to this a little too much, but it worked okay. I got a flat edge on all these. Now I gotta run them through the planer and get them all the same thickness and take my thickest, run it through first, because all of them have gotta get the same thickness through that planer. So this one looks like the thickest on this end. Do the pencil trick again. So I'll go ahead and run these through the jointer and take them over to the table saw. Okay, take it over to the table saw. Okay, I know this edge is 90 degrees to both these faces. So I'm gonna put that up against my fence. I'm just gonna trim a little bit off. Okay, it's time for glue up. I gotta get some more of these clamps. Okay, it's been 24 hours. Let's see what we got.
Wow, freshly milled spruce tree. Very nice. Let's get this thing sanded. I'm going to start with 80 grit. Now i got to deal with these cracks here. Before I do my final sanding, I'm going to fill these in with CA glue. Okay, got my star bond and the activator. Stuff's already hard to the touch. I wanted to get this filled in while I still had the 80 grit sandpaper on. I've worked with this stuff before. It's, it's really hard. You need a lower grit sandpaper to get it up, so 80 grit should do it. I have some holes back here. I'm going to use the old glue and sawdust trick. Okay, I'm going to use this sanding seal before I put on my final coat. It's really soft wood. It'll help it from getting splotches. What? Is it your dinner time or what? Yeah, I got to get this done so I can feed him. I had some sanding sealer, but it was specifically for a water-based polyurethane. This says oil or water. Will you quit? Okay, are you hungry? Is that your problem? Is it dinner time? Square it up to the back end here. It's my only real straight edge. This will not fit in my crosscut sled. It's just a little bit too big, maybe half an inch. So, got to get the track saw out to make these cuts. Okay, I'm going to sand the surface. This is the sanding sealer on here. It says to sand with 320. So that's what I'll do. I think I'll run a champer bit on the edge here. Okay, I vacuumed it, but there's still a little bit on here, so I'm going to use some tack cloth. And get the remaining dust off of here. Hey, what do you want? And before I finish this, I think I'll take the dog out for a little bit. Otherwise, he'll drive me crazy. Yeah. Okay, this is a product I chose. It's a spar urethane. The reason why I picked it is because it was sitting on my shelf. I used it this summer on my front door and it's a great product. It's a clear satin so it'll stain it a little bit but not too much. I really like the look of it on my front door so finish this cord up for the top on my drill press. Not a big fan of the high gloss polyurethane. I tend to keep mine on the satin side. And I'll sand very lightly between coats. I was really impressed with this did with my front door. It made it look like new again. It's a 30 year old front door. Lots of dog scratches on it. I sanded it down, put this stuff on them. Turned out pretty well. You can really tell where all these beetles, if you look at a spruce that had beetle kill, you'll see holes all over it where the beetles had come out after killing the tree. It's amazing how fast they can kill a spruce tree. And if you fly around Alaska in a helicopter or a plane, you can just see hundreds and hundreds of acres of dead spruce. That's why we gotta really worry about wildfires, and that's why I cut all the dead spruce off my property. Certainly don't need standing matchsticks in my yard. Okay, I put four coats of polyurethane on this, four thin coats. Let it dry at least six hours, lightly sanded between coats, 320. And then I just got done 
sanding at 800 for the final sanding and it turned out really nice. I like the way it turned out. Nothing like milling your own lumber. So now all I have to do is put it on here. I think I'll drill from underneath through my supports here. So I'm going to pull out a couple drawers so I can get underneath and screw this thing down.